بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear viewers, welcome to our program The Skill of Positive Dialogue in Islam Because of the importance of dialogue in a Muslim's life and the lives of people in general, and the pressing need of having it in various aspects of social life in general, I'll be discussing the skill of having a healthy, positive, productive dialogue with others. My sources, or the sources I'll be using for this discussion will be the Quran, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the words of the scholars from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Along with the sense of sight from the eyes and the insight of the human heart, Allah places the sense of hearing as one of the main sources of receiving knowledge and understanding. So in a dialogue, a person is supposed to seek to understand before being understood. Allah SWT says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله أخرجكم من بطون أمهاتكم لا تعلمون شيئا وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفئدة لعلكم تشكرون The translation of which is, And Allah has brought you out from the wombs of your mothers while you know nothing and he gave you hearing and sight and hearts that you may give thanks. Meaning, we human beings were brought out of our mother's wombs by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he gave us the hearing and gave us sight and gave us our hearts. Why are these three parts specifically mentioned by Allah in his book? Why does he specifically mention the hearing and the sight and the hearts? His people of Islamic knowledge explain that these three parts of the human body are the receivers of knowledge. When they are used correctly, they contain honor and they contain virtue. And when they are used incorrectly, they are a source of difficulty and loss. Allah says in his book, the Quran, وَلَا تَقْبُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا A translation of which is, And do not follow, O human beings, meaning do not say or do or give witness to that which you have no knowledge. Like someone saying, I have seen something, while in fact they have not seen it. Or they say, I have heard something, when in fact they have not heard it. Verily, the hearing and the sight and the heart of each of those you will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is sort of Isra. Surah 17, verse 36. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, about this verse says in his tafsir, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى نَهَا عَنِ الْقَوْلِ بِلَا عِمْ بَلْ بِالظَّنَّ الَّذِي هُوَ أَتُّهَمْ وَالْخِيَالِ Allah is prohibited making statements without possessing knowledge or statements based upon suspicion and deception. كما قال تعالى اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعد الظن إثم Avoid much suspicions. Indeed, some suspicions are sins. Found in Surah Al-Hujurat, verse 12. Likewise, in a hadith reported by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظَّنِّ فَإِنَّ الظَّنَّ أَكْذَبُ الْحَدِيثِ He said, 
avoid suspicion because suspicion is the most false form of talk. In a hadith found in Sunan Abi Dawood and, and is reported in Sunan Abi Dawood, he said, Bi'sal matiya, matiyatu rajal za'amu. He said, Abu Mas'ud said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, it is a bad riding beast for a man to say za'amu, meaning they claimed. So in this statement, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling people, don't speak about things that are claimed, but be sure of what you're saying. In another hadith reported by Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhum, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, من أثرى الفريا الفراء أن يريا عينيه ما لم ترى. Now really Ibn Umar, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the worst lie is that a person claims to have seen something in a dream that he has not seen. So people actually say that they dream something and they didn't dream it, but they lie about it. And the verse says, كل أولئك meaning the heart and the ears and the sight, each one of these, meaning all of them, you will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the things that we saw and the things that we heard and the things that we have insight about in our hearts. This portion of verse 36 of Islam instructs people about the proper way to use their hearing, sight, and heart. And, and that is, never use them with blind assumption without verifying what you heard or witnessed. Because the initial function of these body parts is to serve Allah Azza wa Jal. Furthermore, the person who realizes that he or she will be questioned about their statements is going to be careful so that when they meet Allah, their answers will be correct. So dear viewers, what is a dialogue from the Islamic point of view? In the Arabic language, a dialogue is called hiwar, al-hiwar, which means to return from one thing to another thing. The Quran says, Verily, he thought he would never come back to us. And here the word is Yahur. In this case, it means to return. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, وَمَنْ دَعَى رَجُلًا بِكُفْرِ أَوْ قَالَ عَدُوَ اللَّهِ وَلَيْسَ كَذَلِكَ إِلَّا حَارَ عَلَيْهِ he said, any person who calls his brother an unbeliever or he calls him Allah's enemy, if that were not true, then it's returned to him. And the word here is hara'ade. Qala noah we rahim wa ta'ala hara'ade huwa ma'ana raja'at alayhi. I raja'al kufra alayhi. The great scholar, al-imam al Nawawi. Who died in the year 676 of the Hijrah, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, The words hara ane means returns. In other words, the unbelief will come back to the one who made the false allegation. You see, that's again a misuse of the person's seeing and hearing and intent. Specifically, a dialogue, hewar is an exchange of words between two parties wherein one party speaks and the other one replies. Another definition is a dialogue is a ca category of speech between two people or two groups which is characterized by an exchange of words that is done in a, in a pleasant fashion is done in a pleasant fashion. There's no attempt for one side to dominate the other. The environment of discussion is peaceful without argument 
or fanaticism. The word hiwar is mentioned three times in the book of Allah SWT. Some form of the word hiwar is mentioned three times. Allah says in Surah Al-Kahn, وَكَانَ لَهُ ثَمَرٌ فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَعَزُّ نَفَرًا And he had property or fruit, and he said to his companions in the course of a mutual talk, وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ They're speaking together mutually. One is speaking, the other one's listening. He says, I am more than you in wealth and stronger in respect of men. Another place Allah SWT says in Surah Al-Kahf, the cave, again, His companion said to him during the, the talk with him, this hiwar, do you disbelieve in him who created you out of dust, meaning created your father Adam, and then out of nutfa, male and female water? And he, Allah subhanahu wa says, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا تَشْتَكِّ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَسْمَعُ تَحَاوِرُكُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ And here again, the Surah Al-Mujadila, Allah mentions the word, Hiwab, تَحَاوَرُكُمَا Indeed, Allah has heard the statement of her, Khayra bin Tha'laba, and she, as she complains to Allah, and Allah hears the argument or discussion between you, you both, meaning between her and the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran contains numerous examples of various dialogues some of these dialogues occur between Allah the Almighty and his creatures, such as the dialogue between Allah the Exalted and the angels regarding the creation of Adam. Also, Allah's dialogue with the Prophet Isa, stand, Jesus. The dialogue of the believing man of Fir'aun's family the dialogue of the believing jinn with their people, the dialogue of the Prophet Musa with Al Khidr, the dialogue of the Prophet Suleiman with the hoople bird. All of these are examples of dialogues found in the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rulings of dialogue. So, how is a dialogue judged in the religion? Well, in the end of Allah, in the knowledge of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if dialogue and arguing is one, to promote goodwill, two, the reason for it is valid, three, it is done with knowledge and proof that is permitted and it's lawful to have that dialogue. In fact, it is recommended and encouraged in the Qur'an to argue in the best manner. As Allah, the Most High says, اُدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمُعِدَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِنْهُمْ بِالْنَتِيهِ أَحْسَنَ Invite to the way of your Lord, meaning Islam, with wisdom and fair preaching and argue with them in the best way. And the word here, Mawridun Hasana, Wajadin Humilatihi Ahsan, it calls for having a conversation with Ahsan Shi, the very, very best way, at the top, the best words. So, what does this verse mean? This is Surah Nahl, Surah 16, verse 125. Qala Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Sa'di, Rahimullah Ta'ala, in his tafsir about this verse, لِيَكُونْ دَعَاؤُكَ لِلْخَلْقِ مُسْلِمَهُمْ وَكَافِرَهُمْ إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ الْمُشْتَمَنَ عَلَى الْعِلْمِ النَّافِعِ وَعَمَنَ الصَّالِحِ This discussion means your invitation to other people about your religion. 
whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, must include beneficial knowledge and righteous deeds. وَبِالْحِكْمَةِ أَيْ كُلُّ أَحَدْ عَلَى حَسْبِ حَالِهِ وَفَهْمِهِ وَقَوْلِهِ وَإِنْقِيَادِهِ With wisdom, calling with wisdom means you should speak to every person according to his or her circumstances, their level of understanding, their teachings, and the willingness of the people to conform to what's being said. Wisdom includes having knowledge as opposed to calling others to the way of your Lord in ignorance. It also means selecting the most important issues first and taking every issue by order of its importance. Why? So we notice that the messengers, all of them, alayhim salatu wasalam, when they spoke with their people, when they dialogued with them, when they called them, because that's why they were sent, they were sent to call people to Allah, azawajal. that when they did it, they always began with the most important topic that they were sent to convey. And that was a topic of the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal, known as Tawheed. And those who are reading the Quran and read it know and can see that that was their main priority first. Wisdom also includes using expressions that can be easily understood so the intellect can fully absorb these words. The tone other words should be gentle and easygoing. All of these are the meanings of the word hikmah in the verse. Hada wa sallallahu ala biyana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaykum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.